but uh, who else? What about you, bro? What's your question? Six, bro, like, excuse me, brother. I do have a question, like, as far as being getting married. Uh -huh. Do I have to go down to City Hall knowing that the corruption in City Hall as far as, uh, you know, the licenses and, uh, you know, Listen, listen, do you got a social security card? Yeah, I do. You got a birth certificate? Yes, I do. You went down to the U.S. government, whatever style is building, to get that, right? Yeah, I did. So therefore, take yourself and go get your man face for your wife, because legally, meaning it's all about a legal thing. Right, that's right. You can't say you have a wife and you don't have no paperwork on her. You understand? That's just, that's just whoring or uh, whoredom. That's it. You gotta have the paperwork for your wife. That is a binding contract. That's right. But and you wanna be within the law. Remember, we are a people of law. We ain't a lawless people. Right. We're people of law. I wanna make sure I'm among our law and not their law. Most of, but the scriptures tell you the powers that be are ordained by God. Right. Him that forsaketh the powers that be forsaken God. Okay. Because it's established by God. Understand okay. that. Okay, so don't listen to a lot of these foolish men. These foolish men will tell you you don't have to have paperwork for your wife, right? What happens when you drop dead? Now your wife ain't even have claim to your body, can't plan your funeral, nothing. Because you don't have legal paperwork for her. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Your mother don't have Caesar Borgia in your funeral. Listen to this. This is why we have on the paperwork. Because this is biblical. This ain't nothing new. Read. The book of Tobit, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh -huh. And called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenant. So if you're familiar with Tobit, Tobit, where was Tobit at? I'm not sure. Tobit was in the uh, Assyrian captivity. He wasn't in the land of Israel. Right. But even Tobit in the Assyrian captivities did what? The paper, bro. And did write an instrument of covenant and sealed it. Did write an instrument of covenant and sealed it. What did, he, did he seal it with his own staff? Did he seal it with no? In, in other words, like they have today, what do they call them? Notaries. Yeah. Where you go get they seal, they stamp. So everybody will say, okay, this is legit. Right. So David wrote out his paperwork and sealed it, meaning he had to get it notarized, right. make it official. Right. You understand? Because, and that's the right thing to do when you're dealing with your wife. You want paperwork from your wife. You want, you want to be locked in. That's, it's called responsibility. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because guess what? When you don't have paperwork, Whenever she get on your nerves, guess what you can do? Say, I'm done with her, I'm gone. And ain't nothing she can do, nothing. Yeah. But when you got paperwork, guess what? You ain't quick to just walk out on that woman, why? Because the law of the land is gonna tear a hole in you. You understand, you're gonna get hit with child support, alimony, all these different kind of payments. Yeah. You understand, but that's why it's important before you even get a wife, you gotta prove the sister. A lot of times brothers is laying down with women, they don't even know them. Right, right. Right. And then they talk about, that's my man. He living in his mama house, she living at her mama house. Right. Yeah. And they talking about, that's my man, that's my woman. That's whoredom. Right. Right. That's filth, that's right. disgusting. The Bible says it is a disgusting thing for a woman to give birth in her father's house or her mother's house. Right. That's right. Meaning she should be at home in her own house with her husband. Understand that. All right? Therefore, at work, guess what? 
I'm not telling you to not to give the truth to no brother at work, because a lot of people didn't learn from brothers at work. But you want to prove that person first. You want to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Because what will happen is they'll turn around and use the information that you gave you, that you gave them, and they will rend you and crush you and have you get fired from your job. And guess what? You gotta be able to work to provide for your family. So if that's your livelihood, you don't wanna jeopardize that. You understand what I'm saying? But now if a brother see you with your fringes or he see you out in town and, or whatever the case may be, then guess what? And he asks you some questions, they serve him up. Use wisdom, but give him the truth. But as far as just walking around correcting brother, you should be growing a beard at work. Sister, why you wearing pants at work? You understand what I'm saying? That ain't right. And you will never get a job. You will never keep a job. Who else? Who else got it? That's it, brother? That's it. Who else got a question? What about you? What, anybody else? What about What's you, your sister, uh, brother? Yeah, I'm else? starting to work, and I got an employer that uh, doesn't, uh, that want me to work on Saturdays, on my Saturday. Other than that, he won't hire me. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you go to jobs and you tell them, you know, you know Saturdays are not available, and then they turn around and tell you, okay, well, we can't use them. Right, right. Listen. What do you do when you got certain jobs that want you to work on your Saturday? I'm going to give you this scripture real quick. Give me this. Let me show you something. Because all of this is of the Lord. Because we didn't want to keep our own holy days, now we're going to have to fight and beg and plead of course. to keep our days since we didn't want to willingly do it. Right. 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 Give me this. Read. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day in our captivity. That's right. So therefore, guess what? We ain't in the rule. We ain't in rulership. So if we, we ain't going to be able to go into our jobs and say, listen, I can't work Saturday because God says so. So guess what? The only thing we can do is what? Be wise and either come up with our own business or find another job, another place of employment. But just quitting your job? No. Especially if that's how you pay your bills. So if you got to work that job, work the job, but continue to look for another job that's going to allow you to keep these commandments. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But don't just run off on the job, oh, no, nah, I can't work, and now you're sitting there begging, trying to uh, trying to recover, trying to feed yourself and feed your family. Right. Because the Bible do say it's not evil to do good on the Sabbath. Right. Meaning, and it's a good thing to be able to provide for your family, right? Of course. The basic, I ain't talking about provide new cars and rims and extra stuff. I'm saying the basic necessity, which our people usually, that's what we work for. We ain't really working for nothing extra. Our people work for the basic things to live. You understand? So that's a good thing. So, but at the end of the day, we have to come back to these laws if we can. But the Lord is going to, that's where Christ comes in. Christ's going to give you mercy. You know we're here in captivity. Because at the end of the day, there's over what? 70-something Sabbaths a year. We got 52 weekly Sabbaths. Then on top of that, we have a Holy Day Sabbaths. I mean, we have plenty of Sabbaths. You're not going to get them all. New Moon Sabbaths. You understand? But uh, that answer your question, bro? That's, that's it, brother. That's all I need to know. What about you, sister? You got the question? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm just curious about the women wearing earrings and makeup. Women wearing earrings and makeup. You talking about the first Peter. You got to be this great. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. He, now he's letting you know, sister. Don't run around here thinking you, just because your appearance and that's all you got. Because a lot of our sisters today, all they have is because they have big breasts or a big behind or a pretty face. That's all they got. So guess what? At home, they cannot benefit their family and husband and nothing. Because they put only their focus on their appearance, their hair, their jewelry, their clothes. Of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold uh -huh. or of putting on of apparel. It's not telling you that you cannot wear these things because it's written in the Old Testament that the Lord gave these things to our sisters. You got it? Read, let me show you. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16 and verse 10. Uh huh. I clothed thee also with broidered work. Broidered work, meaning the nice garments, broidered. Oh, you know how that's stitching. Beautiful stuff. Read. And shod thee with badger skin. With badger skin, because we always we was known for them furs that we loved. Read. And I girded thee about with fine linen. Fine linen, uh huh. And I covered thee with silk. The finest. Read. 
I deck thee also with ornaments. Now he's going to go into the jury. He said, I deck thee also with ornaments. Read. And I put bracelets upon thy hand uh -huh. and a chain on thy neck. And a chain upon thy neck, uh-huh. And I put a jewel in thy forehead uh -huh. and earrings in thine ears. And what? And earrings in thine ears. Because of some, Jehovah's Witness got the understanding that you're not allowed, the women are not allowed to wear gold earrings or plait the hair or do any of these things. But when we read in Ezekiel, the Lord said he gave the sisters all of those things. Lord. But the understanding in Peter's what it's saying is, don't let that be all that you have and that's it. Don't think that your beauty is going to get you to the kingdom. Because the way you can part your hair and put earrings and makeup on, that ain't going to get you to the kingdom. That's all it's saying. Don't let that be all you got. All right? That's all you got to say? That's your only question? Yeah. What else? Who else got a question? My brother right here on the bike. Oh. What's up, brother? How you doing? It's a lot. What's your question? Oh. Let me understand. Okay, people, what are you guys about? <coughs> Listen, advice. this is what we're about. Right. What our job to do as the men of the Lord is give me me and my eight and eight. Bring it on. Because in Christianity, they've been reading this Bible and have been using it to benefit the people. Haven't been using it in its proper form. But now, in these last days, the Lord is waking up the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and they have many of them to come bring this word to our people. Right. Nehemiah 8 and verse 8. This is our job. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. So they read in the book, in the law of they God. They read in the book, in the law of God. Distinctly. Distinctly. What does distinctly mean? In great detail. Distinctly. They didn't just read like they do in church, God so loved the world. Right. We, any brother up here can go a whole hour on God so loved the world. Because we'll read it distinctly. And it's a reason we read it distinctly, not vaguely. We deal with this Bible distinctly. And gave the sin. And did what? And gave the sin. And gave the sin. Gave the sin. Because our people, when they open this Bible, this Bible do not make sense. That's when they just skipped a little love scripture here, a love scripture there, but anything else they don't understand. Because guess what? They, the people have not, the preachers have not given them the sense. Right. So now we're here today as God has risen us up to give our people the sense of the Bible. Bring it up. And this, the sense of the Bible is that you are the sons of God. That's, That's right. right. We went into slavery for breaking God's laws. Right. And God said these curses is going to be upon his people forever right so right. now even today if you want to identify who are the chosen people of god you have to identify them by the hell which are the curses that they've been enduring right there's no other way you can identify them and that's thus saith the lord right. now give me matthew 15 24. now this is going to sum all of it up because at the end of the day this is what our lord and savior came to do the book of matthew chapter 15 and verse 24 because you're going to hear a lot of different things what the Savior came to do, right? But let's hear it out of his own mouth. I'm not going to say nothing. Read. But he answered and said. Now, let me give you the backdrop. Now, the woman, Christ was walking, and it was a woman, a Canaanite woman, it said, that was pleading and begging for him for help. And Christ, it said, Christ ignored her. And then it says, even his disciples came and said, send her away. Meaning the disciples didn't want nothing to do with her. But when Christ finally spoke to this woman, listen to what he told that woman. Call but it and read it. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what did Christ say? What about you? you hear, did you hear what Christ said? Read it again. Let's hear what Christ said again. But he answered and said. But Christ answered and said. I am not sent. Uh-huh. But unto the lost sheep. He said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of who of the house of israel so what does that mean so christ is telling you who we were sent for but our people have been lost in christianity the bible says one thing society and christianity says another you know, we tell our people that christ came for the israelites they cannot believe it because christianity has lied on the bible so much that our people don't understand the truth of Christ. Read that one more time, real quick. But he answered and said. But Christ answered and said. I am not sent. I am not sent. But unto the lost sheep. But unto the lost sheep. Of the house of Israel. Of the house of the whole world. 
of Israel. Of the house of Israel. Because Israel went into slavery for breaking the laws of God. Right. Right. This is why we are in America today. That's right. right. This is judgment. This is punishment of God. Right. This is all yeah. spiritual. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. Everything that you witnessed today that went on with our people is already prophesied in the That's book. Right. That's right. And this is why we're able to come out here and stand bold and say, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you are the Israelites, the real Jews, according to the Bible. That's right. All right. All right. All right. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.